Greetings, dear friends, and welcome to day 10 of our 10 days of prayer. What a special blessing it has been to journey with the Lord thus far. And God has brought us to this 10th day of these 10 days of prayer. And I really want to just pause to just give God glory and thank him for blessing us in this precious journey and teaching us these beautiful truths and and allowing us to see the great work that is at hand and to sense our need of sincere, wholehearted dependence and absolute reliance upon the Lord. And God may truly be praised. We just thank him for giving us such a precious work and assuring us that he'll be with us all the way, reconciling the world to himself through us. So glory truly be to God. Let us pray, friends, as we go to the 10th message of this series. Let us pray. Mighty God, it is such an honor to one more time be seated in your presence, to be welcomed in these holy, blessed Sabbath hours, and to be nourished with these special words for our time. Lord God, you are indeed faithful, just faithful beyond measure. And we truly lift up our hearts in praise and adoration to your name. Lord God, for it is simply amazing to us. It, it leaves us just speechless, Lord. It leaves us in utter awe to see the commitment with which you love your people. Lord God, we're unworthy. As Isaiah, we too join our voices with him in saying we are unworthy. We are incapable. We are infirm. We are a people of unclean lips, oh dear God. We are undone. We thank you, God. We thank you so much for what you've been doing. And we praise you for who you are. You are God and you deserve all our praise. You deserve our all. Thank you for the opportunity to come through these 10 days of prayer and to reflect and pray through these special messages for our time. Mighty Father, we humbly pray that as we again go into your word in this final message for these 10 days of prayer, we pray, Lord God, that you would speak afresh to us. Show us this great commission we are called to be a part of in taking these sacred messages to the world, messages that are to prepare the world for the coming of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for what you have in store and what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome once again, friends, and glory and glory be to God. Let us go back and revisit what we've been covering in Revelation chapter 14. We've been praying through the three angels' messages, and again, God has invited us to reflect upon these very, very special words. Revelation 14, we've looked at the first angel's message. We've studied how these messages are really steps that God wants his people to climb, experiences that God wants his people to have, and experiences God desires for his, for his people to share with the world. So, so we are to be cherishing these experiences and putting them on display for the world to see to fear God, to give him glory, to understand that it is his judgment and we are to vindicate his character before the world, to recognize that we are called to true worship in these last days, that through our true lives in the Lord, the world will be able to see what true worship looks like and who that true God is that God's remnant people are worshiping. We studied verse Eight, which is the second angel's message speaking about Babylon being fallen. But we recognize that if our lives don't exhibit what it means to fear God, to give him glory, to vindicate his character, to worship him aright, we are in no position, friends, to invite others to come out of Babylon. We're in no position for where is the alternative that we're presenting 
to those in these fallen churches? Where is the alternative? Where is the path that leads to victory? Where are we? Where are we showing the practical power of the gospel in our lives to these people? And so Babylon is fallen. And we studied yesterday the spirit of papacy that we are to check. And the spirit of papacy, the prophet speaking to us from the book Great Controversy, letting us know that the spirit of papacy is conformity to worldly standards. And we are called to come out of such a confusion to worship the Lord who is right. The Lord who is all powerful. Verse 9 brings us to the third angel's message. We began this yesterday and began to talk about how God's love is displayed in the third angel's message. For he does not want any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Since he sends this warning message out, this preparatory message, this, this heart crying appeal of the Lord saying, get away from falsehood and stand in the light. If any man worship the beast and his image, the Lord says, upon him shall the wrath of God be poured out. But if we are presenting to the world true worship in the first angel's message, we, can, we are in a better position to invite others to walk in the true worship and to stay away from the worshiping of the beast. In fact, it becomes easier, friends, for the world to see the power. It's so automatically they, they reject that which is false, because they've seen the power of that which is true. But God's expecting us to, to put that on display before the world. As the Lord puts it in Isaiah 62, he says, I want Gentiles to see your righteousness. Not hear, to see righteousness. But then, friends, these, these three angels' message come to us in the, in the tail end of the message in verse 12. Now pay attention. We've studied early writings. The prophet telling us that these three messages are really three steps God wants his people to climb. Which, which brings us to that final step, that final pedestal. And it's really beautiful because he, John has seen these angels, the three angels and, and the, these messages. But then when he finally gets to the end, it almost all, it, it's almost as if the scene shifts and changes. And we read in verse 12 of Revelation 14, John is told, here is the patience of the saints. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. So that opening statement to that tail end is here is the patience of the saints. It, it, it's almost as if it's really beautiful. It's almost as if John is being told, John, now look, these are the people here. Look at them. Behold. These are those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Why? Because they have been climbing and growing. And so as a result of their growing experience with the Lord, because they've been climbing these three steps, as they stand on the final pedestal, John, behold, here they are. This is the path, the patience, the, the word in the Greek uh, saying endurance, perseverance. This is the perseverance of the saints. These are they who keep the commandments of God as opposed to breaking the commandments of God. They have the faith of Jesus, not just faith in Jesus, but the fabric of faith that Jesus wears is the fabric of faith that they wear. Friends, a disturbing, unsettling question then would be, after all these years of, of claiming that we've been preaching the three angels' message. Have we become a people who are more persevering and more enduring? Because that's the end result. That's the final pedestal, right? That's the end goal God's trying to bring us to. For the world to behold the patience of the saints, to behold the people who keep the commandments of God. Question, as a result of preaching these three angels' messages, have we become a more commandment-keeping people? Have we become better representatives and better manifestations of the faith of Jesus to the world? And friends, immediately as we, as we inspect our lives, we recognize we've been very eloquent at wording these messages. We've not been very eloquent at living these messages for the world to see. Very rhetorical. 
but lacking so much power because it's all words and the world's still longing to see the power of the Holy Spirit at a greater matchless work in the lives of his people. Don't misunderstand me, friends. Sure, God has been doing wonderful things through God's people. But God wants to do more. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to emphasize. God wants to do more. However much the Lord has uh, displayed and, and manifested himself through life, God wants to do more, my dear friend. God wants to do more. The question is, will you let him? Will you let him have more of you? Will you let him have more of your heart? Will you let him take you higher and deeper and, and further still in the power of the Spirit of God? Friends, let us climb these steps with the Lord so that we come up to that position where we're putting Jesus on display for the world to see. The patience of saints. That's the final step. That's what we should be experiencing if we're truly sharing these messages through our lives. This should be our experience. These are they that keep the commandments of God. And they have the faith of Jesus. Let's talk about that for a bit. The prophet puts it just, just beautifully. Um, uh, read these words. Read these words. Um, this is from manuscript 27. Very, very emphatic words. Manuscript 27, uh, the soul-saving message, the third angel's message, is the message to be given to the world. The commandments of God and the faith of Jesus are both important, immensely important, and must be given with equal force and power. Notice that emphasis, with equal force and power. Listen to the following words. The first part of the message has been dwelt upon mostly, the last part casually. So notice that. The first part of the message, keeping the commandments of God, that's gotten a lot of emphasis. But the last part, the faith of Jesus, is not comprehended. The last part is spoken of casually. That's sad. In fact, listen to these next words. If we proclaim the commandments of God and leave the other half scarcely touched, the message is marred in our hands. Whoa. So notice the holistic nature of this message. We can't just be emphasizing and, and, and sort of in, create an imbalance in the message. While the commandments of God are important, equally important also is the faith of Jesus. While we may speak much about the commandments of God, leaving the faith of Jesus scarcely touched mars the message in our hands. And that is the Lord's, that is the Lord's command, friends. That is the Lord's desire. That this is the message that is on display through the lives of God's people. Because the reason why they're able to keep the commandments of God is because they are cherishing and experiencing the faith of Jesus. Because their lives are hid with Jesus in eternity. Jesus is who they invite in every day, taking the, 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 the appeal from 2 Corinthians 6.16 recognizing the Lord saying, I want to dwell in you. I want to walk in you. So God's people have been inviting him to live in them. God's people have been inviting him to, to, to live in their hearts, live in their lives, to walk in them that they may walk that narrow path in him. Friends, that is the appeal. Let us not leave any part of this message uneven. Let us not present a rough-edged message. We present an even message, not an imbalanced message, but an even message, not even one portion of the message untouched or, 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 or with a jagged edge. May we present it as the Lord gives it to us in its fullness. The faith of Jesus, we need that. We need that. Romans 10, 17 tells us that faith increases where the word increases. For faith comes by the hearing of the word. So where the word is increasing, their faith will be increasing. Friends, let us not just be readers of God's word. Let us be 
those individuals who are seeking Jesus, for in John 5, Jesus tells us, you search scriptures for you think in them is eternal life, but all the scriptures testify of is me. But you wouldn't come to me. A knowledge that's not a knowledge of scripture that's not leading us to Jesus is not the right knowledge, friends. That's not, that's not what that knowledge is for. That will create pride, not humility. And Christ is saying, all the scriptures testify of us. We let us intentionally, my brethren, I appeal to you. Let us intentionally in every chapter, verse, and line look for Jesus. For as we get to know him more through the word, the more will our faith in him, our dependence upon him, our leaning upon him, our trusting him will increase. More word, more faith. Perhaps you, like the father of the child who Jesus had healed, is Jesus' words are, if you believe all things are possible to him who believes, and the father's response is, Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, help my unbelief. May we come to the Lord, friends, seeking him wholeheartedly recognizing that no one's loved us like Jesus. No one's loved us like Jesus who, 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 who was on the cross and the most powerful, powerful manifestation of faith is seen in the life of Jesus. The most perfect example of faith can be seen in the life of Jesus. It is he who is calling us. On the cross was displayed the power of the faith of Jesus. And God is desiring for us to have that as we will face similar circumstances, as we will face persecution. Of course, not at the degree that Jesus was persecuted. For we would never know how it feels to carry the weight of every sin committed since Adam. But let us look at Jesus. Let's look to him and learn what it means to persevere. In fact, his agony is... is, is is put in words in Desire of Ages, uh, page 753, paragraph 1, very striking words. The prophet tells us, Desire of Ages 753, paragraph 1, the prophet says, Upon Christ as our substitute and surety was laid the iniquity of us all. The guilt of every descendant of Adam was pressing upon his heart. But now with the terrible weight of guilt he bears, he cannot see the Father's reconciling face. Now, wait a minute. The reason why he cannot see the Father's reconciling face is because of Isaiah 59, 2. Our iniquities separate us from God, but it wasn't his because he's carrying the guilt of every descendant of Adam. It is that sin upon him that's causing the separation. With the terrible weight of guilt that is of my sin, the iniquity of, 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 of myself that he carries on himself is what is causing that separation cannot see the Father's reconciling face. In fact, we're told so great was his agony that his physical pain was hardly felt. Wow. So great was the burden of my sin on his heart that his physical pain was hardly felt. And yet in faith, and yet in faith, his, 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 his towards, the, 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 towards his last breath, his, one of his closing words were, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Surely he had said, my God, why have you forsaken me? For he was feeling the separation. But he rested his life in his father's hand by faith, not what he saw, but by what he trusted. The most perfect manifestation of faith we see ever. In the life of Jesus on the cross, and God's inviting us to look to Jesus that we may have the faith of Jesus in these last days. Dear friends, let us come to him. Let us come to him, as Isaiah says, while we still can. Let us call upon him while he is still near, for soon probation will close, and the high priest will be wearing those kingly garments to come take his people home. May we be a part of that number, friends, that cannot be numbered. May you be a part of those show that chosen generation the Lord is coming for. 
that he wants to spend eternity with. May you be found ready, my dear friends. May you continue to not just keep these few days of prayer, make it a year of prayer, make it a lifetime of prayer that prepares you for Jesus. Let us come together in prayer again. Dear Father, thank you for honoring us with your presence, for honoring us with your word. Thank you for the guidance, for the commitment, the striving of the Holy Spirit in our life. We thank you for the ministry of heavenly angels who watch over us, direct us, counsel us, are striving rather with us, who are saving us, have saved us from so many dangers. We thank you, God, how deeply heaven is interested in our salvation. Thank you for our high priest, Jesus, who stands in the gap for us, intercedes And the Bible says he ever lives to intercede for us. Thank you. Thank you, God. Lord, may we join hands with him as we intercede for our brothers and sisters. As we stand in the gap for others and become co-intercessors with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. As the more we think about you, the more we study about you, we recognize just how much we are loved by our God. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Please speak to us continually from your word. Lift up our hearts far away from the darkness of this world that we may firmly fix our eyes upon the Lord who is mighty to save. Thank you for this precious privilege, this great honor. Thank you for the humbling opportunity to know that Jesus is our great and mighty friend. May we learn to love you, learn to serve you, learn to magnify you before the world. Thank you for these blessed days of prayer. Take us through this year looking unto Jesus. We praise thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.